how would Gladiators change your life if you got it? It's a bigger platform. It gives me um, president. Mm -hmm. um, it gives me it gives me the light I need. When we look in the sky, there's stars, right? But there's always one star that's shining really, really high. And those other people that look at those other stars, you see those stars, but you see this one star. And when you see that one star, it makes everybody else see that star because now I'm up here in a place where people can't reach me yet. I'm going into the action acting lane. We don't have the Michael Jai Whites and Wesley Snipes and those no right. more. You have a me. Right. So it all ties together. Gladiators is what's going to take me to the next level. Because mm -hmm. it's all about how can we get people to want to watch this and see this person? Who is this person? You right. just can't, you could get some nobodies. Oh, yeah. It's going to be harder to brand that show. Right. But you get a Mr. Kaye. They know who I am. Hi, and welcome back to Chillin' with Ice. I'm your host, Lori Fetrick, and I'm the former American Gladiator, Ice Ice Baby. We are Chillin' with Ice. Hey, welcome back to Chillin' with Ice. I'm your host, Lori Fetrick, and I've got a special guest today. Very excited to have him here. His name is Mr. Corey Collette. He is a celebrity trainer. We're going to get into that, who he trains, how he trains him. Also, there's a possibility there's a nice little uh, surprise at the end of this. We're going to talk a little bit about gladiators, and let's get into this. First and foremost, Corey, thank you so much for coming out and doing my podcast today. I know it's been a while. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. Now, I met you, God, when I was over at Burbank Fitness. What was that, like four, four five, five years, years ago? Because yeah. it was before COVID, before COVID, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So you walked in the gym and all the girls were like, oh, that's Corey Collette. And I was like, who's Corey Collette? And they were like, he's a celebrity trainer looking at me so hot. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, you know, as a celebrity trainer, I feel like I want to, in a, it's been a long time where it's like a celebrity that's a celebrity trainer. Yeah. And I had to make that my own by, you know, training superstars, but realizing that I'm a superstar myself. So how, how do I stay relevant? How do I get in that um, realm to be able to keep this as a business because a lot of trainers you don't know who they are. Absolutely. I wasn't about to play that. Yeah. No. no. You're 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 too much of a a, a brand in your own, a celebrity yes. star. So tell me about a um, little bit. Um, let's get into a little bit of background. Just you know, touch on this so my audience knows. And that is, I mean, when did you first start training and realize that you got into? I mean, did you ever want to compete? By the way, I, I did. mean, you're built, man. You did. I did. I competed for eight years. Wow. And that's how I kind of got into training. Mm -hmm. Uh, first, it started just the passion of wanting to look good when mm -hmm. I was younger, uh, kind of like very like I was like maybe 20, 19. Okay. And I started to work out. I boxed first. Box was, boxing was my my first passion. And I was at the postal service. And so it was funny because my biggest weight loss came from being at the postal service because and at that time, I maybe I forgot how old I was, but I was for like six months. I was a, a mail carrier. And I remember going from like 247 to like maybe 205 wow. but that's all that walking so my body just yeah. was like damn so um when i was working for the postal service i realized you know i started competing in 2008 and what i was trying to do in six years i did in eight weeks and i fell in love with training after yeah. that i got addicted to it and i had a very interesting body one of my friends ken hensley um he's the guy who's who can i can say it, the reason why i became a celebrity trainer because he wasn't available to train the cast of fantastic four which i got my first job with michael b jordan in 2014 and um, he sent them to me. But he told me when I was working out with him one day, he said, Corey, the way your shoulders pop, he said, you should think about competing. Mm -hmm. And my goal was always to get abs. And I realized that bodybuilders could get crazy abs. Yeah. <laughs> so I got me a coach and we did a show and I got addicted. At that time, I was at the postal service and I remember quitting the postal service because I said, you know what, this is not for me. Yeah. And I'm going to make money making people look great and looking good at the same time. So, lo and behold, me quitting the postal service in 2010 in the South, which is dumb to be a trainer <laughs> at that time, people was like, what are you doing? Yeah. I had no idea that I was going to turn into the man I am today. But, you know, it's like when you bet on yourself. And people know me. I'm going to bet on myself 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. And um, quit the postal service. And within three years, I became a trainer that year. Within three years, I got my first job as a celebrity trainer on the movie Fantastic Four. That's why I met Michael B. Jordan. And then from then on, maybe the end of that year, I moved to LA, moved out here, and I started to train everybody. Yeah. And then it just, my life, it went crazy. It went from training all the movies, the celebrities, then I'm on a Khloe Kardashian show and I'm doing that. And next thing you know, I'm acting and I'm producing and I'm blah, blah. And it's like, where do I breathe at? Where do I stop? Yeah. And I just couldn't stop, I got addicted to it. Yeah. Yeah, and here we are now, and it's just, right now, I'm, I'm living in both worlds. Yeah. Doing it the way I want to, acting and also film. I mean, acting and, and fitness. 
see, it's amazing because of the journey that you've went on is a journey that so many people like they they dream of that journey, you know, and you've actually lived it. Mm -hmm. You were there. What are some of the pivotal moments through that journey that you kind of went? Okay, so this is a lot of fun, but yet at the same time, it's a hard hustle because we know it's a hard hustle. I mean, but it's a fun hustle, but it's a hard hustle. You know, it's a constant like, you know, it is a constant grind, mm -hmm. you know, but yet you have to be really, really in tune with who you are and your body mm -hmm. and everything going forward because not only are you bodybuilding and taking care of your body, mm -hmm. now you're training other people that are demanding your time you know, and mm -hmm. you're just like, whoa, hold on a second. Were there any moments that you kind of went, all right, how do I actually pull back from the celebrity training a little bit and focus more on me and my brand? It was after I got a little more stable. I had, I had to build a big enough name mm -hmm. that it can, it, can, it, can, it can survive on its own. Okay. Because if you're always trying to be the person, you don't have time to be the person. Right. So when I was able to like let that, the Corey Kaye brand started to just be who it was. I know people knew who I was. So I could start focusing on myself. And my clients had enough respect to me to know, like, after we finish a movie, I got to do what I got to do. So if I, cause I'm not good, you're not going to be good. Right. Um, so, you know, it was, and it was a, it was a very long stretch. You notice from 2014 to 19, I didn't have a year off. Mm. I was black. I was fantastic for Creed one, Star Wars seven and eight, Creed two, Pacific Rim, Black Panther, Without Remorse, some, uh, it's a lot. I was just going to say, I mean, I'm and it sure, was, yeah. yeah. And it was like the movies didn't go to now. I'm on television doing a Kardashian show, and that was four seasons by itself. So I'm doing that, and I'm doing movies at the same time. So, you know, you have to find yourself in the midst of it and say, what do you want? And I didn't, I didn't understand what I wanted. So I think the biggest, what I wish I would have done before is understood the business of fitness. Mm hmm instead of being the celebrity of fitness. Got it. Because I was making the money, right. but the money could have made more money. Correct. Um, and I, not, now from what I know now, if I could do it again, that's what I would have did, but I needed to learn that. Well, we all go through those learning curves. Mm -hmm. How did the Kardashians change your life? Just that, out of curiosity. That's what made me a superstar. Okay. People think it was Creed one, no. Mm -hmm. When I got on Revenge Body, I was the only alpha black male in fitness on TV at that time. Mm -hmm. That will rip you to, to, sh to pieces and tell you I love you at the same time. <laughs> tough love. That's was, a great trainer, though. Tough love was my was my thing, and people love me for it. Um, and when I say people knew me from here to Phil the Philippines, the Philippines, I remember going to China. I had to go to Australia for a, 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 a appearance, and we had to stop in Hong Kong, in China, in Hong Kong. I was in the airport, and people ran up to me. And I said, "Oh yeah, I'm him." Yeah. Because it's all over the world. People knew me everywhere. When you, when you are attached to that name, mm -hmm. there's no place that people won't know who you are. Oh, I know. That's, that's crazy. So, okay, so I only have one question in that realm because I, I forgot you. all about the Kardashians. <laughs> um, was there ever a moment that you just went, oh, screw this shit. They're just, too much, they're just too high maintenance. This is just too much drama. I don't know if I can handle this or do this. Never a moment like that. Never. Like, was it totally fun? Was it awesome? Like, no dramas, just. So I've met, I've met Kim and Kanye when they were together. Mm -hmm. and I was at like a after a concert one year. I met them very polite, cool. Chloe was the one who I was closer with because mm -hmm. I was on her show. We worked out and everything. And Chloe, Chloe was, Chloe's the greatest, cool. And she actually worked out, very friendly, nice, cool. You know. It, we kept in touch and everything. It was just literally like what people say. I never saw that. That's I've never saw it because I think most people just go off of what they think they know and what other people say. Oh, of course, and how they edit the show. That's it. And they, it, I guess, they edit the show because people like drama. Yeah, they do. But they're, it's not like that at all. <laughs> it's not like that at all. Yeah. You know, it's it was literally like I remember texting like I'm texting Chloe. Like some some a lot of times it was like, oh wow. I'm texting Khloe Kardashian, we about to go work out. Yeah. And then it became my normal. Yeah. But nah, it was, it never was, never was that. Not one See, time. See, that's kind of cool, as a matter of fact. Um, and I have some notes here that I read, uh, that I kind of put together because of the fact that there were so many things that I wanted to ask you. So 
is there a difference? Is there a difference between training celebrities and just everyday normal people that come to you that go, oh my God, I need this, will you train me? And my question, meaning is there like this strict timeline when it comes to the celebrities most of the time? Sometimes. And then the other people, they have, they have pretty much all the time in the world, you know? So is there anything like when it comes to celebrity training that is absolutely different that pops out? Everyone gets treated like a celebrity. Okay. I don't differentiate nobody. Mm -hmm. You don't. Now, if you have to, if you have to do something in a timely manner, I got to give you more attention. Okay. So that means you get it harder, but you have to do it more than once a day. Mm -hmm. Like right now, my roster: is Lizzo, John Boyega, Cody Christian, Aldis Hodge, Afian Crockett. That's it right now. That I see. That's a lot right now. That's that's. A, I mean, just that little bit. I mean, yeah. that right there is going to take a. Sh Ton of time. I don't because I make them train together sometimes. Oh, and Scott McNary. Okay. Scoot McNary. And if you look at my story sometimes, you'll see everybody in my, I always say I train superstars in my garage. Okay. And a lot of big celebrities, you come to me, you come in to get real work. Yeah. It's no, I don't take your time and be all prissy. Now you're going to come get your ass kicked. Yeah. Because you got to, you got, people have to see you on TV. People have to see you. There's, you can't, you can't make film disappear. Hmm. It's not going anywhere. Right. So I don't take away from if you're a celebrity or you just a mom and pop that won't get in shape, mm. you're going to get in shape like you got to get on the red carpet, point yeah. blank. And that really depends. I used to train people a long time ago, and I, I know exactly, I mean, when it comes to every, and I say every average, everyday people because of the fact that usually they have more time on their hands to where they can deal with it. Different celebrities that I actually trained, they're like, I need it like in 12 weeks, I've got to have abs. You know, or something like that. I tell him in a heartbeat, you ain't, look at your fat ass, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I, I love it. I, I love I don't, it. I don't, I'm, I'm you do tell not you sugarcoat. I don't, sugar, I don't care who you are. Right. And it is what it, don't come in with these over, uh, over expectations and shit like that when you're not gonna do the work on yourself because I'm gonna right. push you. And if you allow me to do what I have to do, it's gonna work. But if it's not, if you don't allow me to do it, then it ain't gonna work. So I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't sell dreams. I love that because the fact that I never got to the level where you were at, mm -hmm. okay, as far as like I could say these things. When Julian Michaels got her job on The Biggest Loser and I watched her, I was like, holy shit, she's saying everything I want to say to my clients and yet I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. of the fact that they'd have been like, you're gone. Mm -hmm. You know, because they want you to sugarcoat things. They want you to tell them, you know, everything they want to hear and it's just like, I can't hold your hand as you're driving through McDonald's, you know, and yet you're bitching to me that you haven't lost those five pounds this week. Right. It's like, give me a break. Right. And it's just when I watched her, I was like, oh, she has the job I've always wanted just to like yell at people, have fun with people. But be, be, just be real. Be honest. Actually, is really what it comes down to. Just be honest and real. Right. You That's know, all it is. Yeah. I have I have guys on my social media right now, you know, just, OK, what do I do? And a, a guy actually just sent me a photo of himself and he's like, 110 pounds weighing like six foot. And I'm like, um, first and foremost, you need to eat, dude. Right. <laughs> you know? you, you're going to fly away with a strong wind come. Exactly. First of all, you're a grown man. Have some respect for yourself. Yeah. Man. Gain some weight. <laughs> oh, it's, it's unbelievable. But I admire that and I respect that. And I just absolutely, that's one thing that I wish I could have done at that point in time mm -hmm. is just be really honest and real with these people. Right. But that's when I just went, okay, I'm out. I'm going to open my own gym so I don't have to personal train anymore. <laughs> yep. That's, that's, you know? That's what it's about, and it's, that's the business of it. Now, when women come to you, let's say over 35, going into their 40s, right now it's finally, finally becoming like more vocal, more talked about. They're gaining weight, they're gaining belly fat, they don't know what's wrong, they're dieting, they're training. But we all know there's one thing that's happening. They're going into perimenopause. They're going, their hormones are shifting. How do you deal with that with women coming to you do you do you say hey listen i need you to go get your blood work taken i mean check your hormones out because something's happening here how I'm do you on, deal with i'm these big women? on blood work to know what's going on on the inside because mm -hmm. you do not know you can look amazing and then be off and you don't know what's going on so you have to go see what's going on on the inside then when we see what's going on on the inside then we can fix what's on the outside after mm -hmm. we fix what's on the inside you're gonna get the results you want um but also just women understanding that you know as women start to i'm gonna say decline in age get older, they don't want to lift, you know, weight training is the key to longevity. Oh, God, yes. 
like you will put so many more years on your life yeah. if you weight train. All this cardio shit, and not just doing your butt exercises. Oh my God, I am so sick. Everybody want to train their ass, like every woman in Gold's Gym. When I when I see you in there, it's like every woman is on a butt machine, a, le a, a, a squat leg machine, leg uh, press. It's like I think I'm the only one over in the weights training my arms and my shoulders because I'm so addicted to that. They forget that there's more body parts, mm -hmm. which is stupid. Yeah. So no, I make my I make my women train, train. I don't give a damn who you are. You won't be in there just doing booty exercises. We don't, we, I bring you through, and I'm known for that because when I first started training years ago, I was doing contest prep and I had bikini and um, physique women and, mm, uh, and yeah. physique women. And all I did was train, I had mostly women. Yeah. And I love the challenge because women, of course, the hormonal imbalance at times, women carry more fat than men. Mm -hmm. So it was like learning their bodies and changing their bodies, it was just the best thing for me because I knew I could train a man like that. Yeah. And that was, that was more intriguing to me than anything because I got to learn it was a test for me. But you know, as, as, as women get, when older women come to me, it's like, let's see what's going on first. When we figure out what's going on, then we can take it to the next level. Check their diet, look their exercises, all that kind of fun stuff. And then the other thing is, is that once they get into that kind of, that hormonal issue, the one thing you're absolutely right, the more muscle you have on your body, actually here's the other thing I, I used to tell people, the more muscle you have, the more you can eat, you know? It, your metabolism is higher, everything is working efficiently. I was just saying this morning, for, as far as for men, so there's times when I'm doing intermittent fasting, um, which I love intermittent fasting sometimes, but when I, I feel like I may be wrong, people could come at me, they, they can just correct me if it's fine, but I'm going off my body. Right. I got a lot of muscle. I got a lot of lean muscle. I don't have a lot of body fat. Right. When my muscle is like where it is right now, I can't intermittent fast and do all those things. Mm -hmm. I start feeling lethargic. I feel like my sugar drop. I'm getting lightheaded. I feel because I have to feed this thing. Agreed. Now, if I'm a smaller man <clears throat> that don't intake so many, so many calories and also don't have the muscle mass that I have, mm -hmm. you can intermittent fast and eat that one meal later. I, I really train hard as shit every time. Mm -hmm. Then I'm doing, I'm running, I'm jumping, I'm, I have to eat. So I said, yesterday I was like, oh hell no, I'm done with this intermittent fasting shit. Yeah. I woke up this morning, I was starving, breakfast. I'm eating every two and a half hours. I was a little tardy today because I had to make sure I got my food to come here and talk to you and I make sure I have the right brain cognitive yes. so that I can actually talk to you and have a great conversation. Yeah. And it's, it's important that we eat. Yes. People think that you got to, I want to lose weight, eat then. I wanna, oh, I know. I want to put muscle on, eat then. Eat. I want to look good, eat then. You know, don't stop starving yourself. Exactly. This whole, I mean, everybody's jumping on different bandwagons as far as different fad diets, you know. It's like, I'm cutting my carbs, I'm doing, doing two hours of cardio, I'm doing this. It's just like, and you can look at them and realize what's going on with their body. I sure can. I can tell somebody doing too much cardio. I can mm -hmm. tell when they're, just, when they're doing too much weight training and they're not doing any cardio. I can tell when they're, when they're eating in a, in a too bad of a deficiency. I can look at you and see it. Mm -hmm. And, and you can tell, and that's just fix those small things and you can have a body that you want. Look at Lizzo right now. Lizzo is weight training more than anything. And she's eating. People don't even know, like, she's eating more food. Yeah. She's weight training. We do more weight training than anything. Right. And that's why it's falling off. And I'm not even, I'm just getting started with her. If people don't understand that it's like, the more, the more you take care of what's on the inside, the outside's going to reflect it. And it's just gonna, it's, it, it is. The body fat's gonna start coming off. I mean, to be honest with you, this is the first time in my life, at my age, everything, it's like, I know I'm getting my eight hours. Um, my stress level is completely like chilled. Everything is working efficiently. I'm eating whatever I want. That's amazing. You know, I, I'm kind of the same way. If I, if I eat early in the evening, let's say that my last meal is like, I don't know, seven, eight o'clock, I'll wake up sometimes five in the morning. I'm starving. Exactly. You know, body needs it. Yeah. And so you've, and that's the other thing. Speaking of which, it's like, you have to listen to your body. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't listen to they their know. body, you know, and when you're hungry, you're hungry. Mm -hmm. You need to eat at that point in time. You got to. Don't, and the other thing is don't cut your carbs out. You know, they're like, oh, I'm only eating protein and vegetables. It's like, uh, 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 uh. When people you say, those carbs. I was at a party the other day and somebody was like, I cut my carbs out 12 weeks ago. That's why you look stupid. That's why. Cut your carbs out and look at you. you. Look a hot mess. I love it. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Over here looking like a Chips Ahoy cookie boy. Uh, but that's, that's, that's for another time. <laughs> I hear you, man. 
Let's get into gladiators. Yeah. Okay, so this is, you are a gladiator hopeful, man. You're, you're going for it. I'm going for it. They're, they're rebooting the show. Yeah. And I envy you. I almost a little bit of jealousy because <laughs> I'll tell you something, man. If they call me back, even at my age, and said, you want to be a gladiator? I'll say, sign my ass up. <laughs> I might not be able to get out of bed the next morning, but fuck, I'll do it. I will give it my... <laughs> 10,000% man, I could totally do it again. Yeah, we was, I was, so when they called me, well, when I got the email about it, every day I watched Gladiators on my TV in my gym. And by the way, your body was crazy. Oh my God, I look back on those videos Yo, and I'm just yesterday, like, yes, holy shit. Yesterday we was watching it and I was like, yeah, it was crazy. I was a beast you back a beast. then, man. <laughs> I was. You was a beast. But I was training <clears throat> for nationals. Oh, you, you were? I was training for nationals. Okay. I wanted to go pro. You know, so when I tried out, I was I was going for nationals. Celebrity trainer stole my pro card. My last show, 2014 Junior Nationals in Chicago. I, I played second. I would have I would have won the next year if I'd have came back. I I killed too, and then I became a celebrity trainer, and it was like I ain't worry about it no more. Exactly. I don't need to do this. They want to be my friends. Now. I don't care about that. Right. When I said, I, I hear you because right when I tried out for gladiators, when I was getting ready for nationals, all of a sudden I got the call and I got the gladiators. So I was like, done. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> because That's it was only a stepping stone anyway. Yeah. I mean, I loved it and I knew I'd never stop training, but the actual competing part of it, mm -hmm. you know, that was kind of eh, eh. Yeah. But, um, I have to say that right when I said gladiators, I just saw the biggest smile come on your face that I haven't seen like in a long time. So that, that's yeah. exciting. It That's is. very exciting. It, it's crazy because I've always watched it, and I always think of myself as a warrior or a gladiator. Um, I carry myself like that. Yeah, um, you do. I'm a leader, but I'm also um, I'm a defender, and I'm a protector. I'm also I'm an entertainer. Mm -hmm. I know I bring something to the table, and, and you know they reached out to me, and I talked to them on an interview, and they loved it. And then it went silent for a minute, and I was like, oh, buddy. And then right. I, like I told you, one night I was laying, I was sleeping one night, and I had a dream that I got an email from them, and I woke up in the middle of the night, checked my emails, no email, and then at 11 o'clock, at 11.14 that afternoon, my email comes through saying, just letting you know we're still, you know, you're still in the run, mm -hmm. and they're just waiting, you know, the business department should get to you, and we're thinking about doing it in January. And I was like, this is crazy, because I just dreamt this situation last night, and my fingers are still crossed, because we know the business, but yeah. I think, who else would you get? I mean, come on, you fit it perfectly. You absolutely fit the mold perfectly. You're damn good looking, you know that. Thank you. You've got the body, mm -hmm. you've got the personality, you've got the smile, you've got the charisma. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you one thing. After you are on Gladiators and you're on Gladiators and you're kicking ass and you just beat the shit out of somebody, give them that smile and that alone, America's just gonna love you. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> because you can be cocky on the show and you can kick some ass, but for some reason that was one of the things that I noticed that everybody said they absolutely loved about, I'm gonna call it my character, Ice, is because I would go out and kick your ass, but when I'm done, I'll smile at you and shake your hand. Because mm -hmm. it's all about the competition. That's it, that's it. When the, com when the competition's over with, you're my friend. Yeah, exactly. While it's on, I'm gonna try to take your head off. Exactly. But after it's over with, that's it. And that's me, I'm, I'm a, I, that's what I wanna bring to the show. I'm just, I'm excited about it happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I know what it's gonna do for my career already because I'm already, becoming, I'm already in action films. I have an action film I'm getting ready for right now. Gladiator just adds to it and it keeps building me on and be yeah. it. You know, my, my overall goal is to be the, the next version of The Rock. Um, there you go. I'm not as tall, but I got a better body. Uh, <laughs> just saying. Uh, uh, and a prettier smile. And a prettier smile. <laughs> um, and that's what it is. And, and to continue to inspire and, and show people like, I do have a crazy, my career is kind of, it is crazy. Mm -hmm. When I sit back and think about it, like where I was at and where I'm at now, I'm like, how the hell I got here? You know, and it's by the grace of God and just having faith in my in him and having faith in myself. And hard work. Hard, I'm, a, I'm a work horse. Mm -hmm. I am a work horse. Like you, you and I work with intention. Mm -hmm. I don't work in I don't work in the mud and do nothing. Right. You know, I don't spend my wheels in the mud. Nah, I work with intention and I'm strategic. Mm -hmm. And I know what I'm going to do. And, I, and, and I'm strategic because I've made so many, so many mistakes in the past, even before fitness and the life I lived growing up in New Orleans in the street and, 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 and the street raising me and having to understand that. It's a lot of decisions I was able to pay attention to and understand, like, your, your, the, your life game is going to be chess, son, mm -hmm. not checkers. Right. And I've always played it like that. Mm -hmm. And I deal my own cards. And like I can say, that's why I say right now, 
I'm living the life I want to live by my own rules, my way. Mm -hmm. And it's working. So that's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. perfect. So now when you go back to Gladiators and you watch the show, I'm going to ask you, is there, I want to have, I want to, I want to know two events that you go, I can't wait to do that event. That is going to be some fun shit. <laughs> One is, I don't know the names, but I'm. Give me, the, give me the for instance. Y'all have the. Joust. The, what is it? Right, right when you did this, <laughs> yes. that's a joust. That's that big ass joust that can just knock the head off of somebody. Yeah, that's one. And also, um, I don't know if they're going to have the wall climb on this one. They'll always have the wall climb. I'm coming to get you. <laughs> I am coming. Because I, I'm not, there's, there's the staples. Mm -hmm. There's Powerball, where you mm -hmm. put the balls in the cylinder. I, yeah, that, that's, that's, that can be fun for me, too, because. You're fast. I'm fast, and I, I, yeah. I'm fast side to side, too. So I can get you. Um, but I just, something, I like things that's her, heroic. Yeah. Um, and me, you getting a chance to climb up there and me come and get you, you better go. Right. Because when you see this King Kong coming after you, yeah. I'm not slowing down. In the joust, here's the one head up thing right off, right off the bat. Hit him first. Yeah. Just right, I mean, you can anticipate. It's funny because everybody's like, what are, what are the advantages that gladiators have over contestants? And I go, well, first and foremost, to be honest with you, we're used to being on camera. So therefore we have, we don't have that anxiety, that nervousness to where the contestants that come mm -hmm. in, they're nervous, right? you know? So being the gladiator, it's like after you do the event a few times, you can kind of anticipate that whistle, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? You know and right, I mean, while they're blowing it, you're Bam. blowing it to the head. And I'm fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's coming, it is coming, it is coming. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I just can't wait to the whole thing because I see the new guys they got now in, 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 in the UK. Yeah, they yeah. see the, they see the podcast. Yeah, I They're didn't really like done. the. Yeah. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm sorry, UK gladiators, but I mean honestly, their first season gladiators were the shit. Okay, and I don't know what happened as they kind of kept rebooting. I think they kind of went more character driven mm -hmm. rather than just letting them be themselves they, they and kicking ass. Like WWE, because yeah. you know it's funny. It was WWE right before Gladiators. Literally before they called me, I had just met with um, Shane McMahon. We just were shooting guns and we was out there in the, in the, the desert. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said the same thing. He said, you got the look, you got the charisma. He said, you know, you got it. He said, give me a call. I reached back out to him, talked to him just as a friend. I didn't, I didn't want to go to WWE. Okay. And then Gladiators was literally the next week. Why didn't you want to go to WWE? Just out of curiosity. I'm doing a lot of stuff. Okay. It's going to, even though that's a big platform. Yeah. I think it was going to take me out. And I don't, and a I think A lot of this, time, doesn't it? Yeah, right? you know, and... It's a lot of wear and tear. Mm, a lot of hit in the floor. It's a lot of hard. hit. I got to be strategic. Yeah. Glad is we're going to shoot, what, 19 episodes, something like that. I yeah. don't know. And then the rest is press. Yeah. I can, I can, I can hold that. Yeah. If I got to be every day, I don't know if I can. I'm not a young buck like I used to be. I still move around like I am. Yeah. But I got to be mindful of, you know, what am I really going to be doing? What can my body do? You know, energy timing. Right. So it would have been, I could, I could, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. They're gonna, there's going to be a, a storyline that I'd be a guest star on WWE coming from Gladiators. Cause I'm going to be that big of a Gladiator. There you go. Guarantee I'm be that big of a Gladiator where they're going to have me come over there where it's a crossover and I just go do a, a, a match. Whereas right. just for entertainment. Right. But Gladiator-wise, I can guarantee I will be the biggest Gladiator that's – I'm going to steal the show completely. And I'm, that's, I'm only there to do that. Tell me why. Because you won't get nobody like me. You won't get the showmanship like me. You won't get the crowd favorite. I'm already a name, so people waiting to see what I could do. Yep. They're not going to come athletically, athletically and built like me at all. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to bring the heat. Mm -hmm. And I'm, a I'm, I'm literally going to take the show. I have the, the mindset. I have the, the charisma. I have the strength. I have the swag. Mm -hmm. They don't have no swag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm the one that you I know going, they don't. I'm the person that you're going to want to record. You're going to be, you're going to want to watch it on, you're going to want to watch that video over and over again. You're going to get the most reels, you're going to get the most saves, you're going to get the most everything because I'm going to come to put a show on. Right. Nice. I, say the, I say the name Showstopper because that's what I have and I know I'm going to make it shorter because oh, I know. I was, signing is going to be a whole lot. Exactly. I, I asked him what his gladiator name would be and in the gym and you're like Showstopper and I'm like, all right, let's think about that for a minute. You're going to be signing thousands of autographs, Showstopper. I mean, my, my real name. My, or you can just Kanye, go SS. That's what I said, SS, yeah. because 
when I had to, I, I've had to sign my, my, my name for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think shows, I'm going to go, it's going to be SS. I'm the one you don't want to, you don't want to get up to go to the bathroom. You want to wait. You yeah. want to, you, you don't want to go get no popcorn. You want to just wait. Just out of curiosity, if they veto that, what would your second button or your second one? Have you thought about that? Nope. Because they might. They, they, There's a possibility when it comes to these producers, trust me, they're thinking differently. You know mm. what I mean? And the biggest thing that I'm hoping that they're not going to do is recirculate the names. No, I don't do I that. don't know why they're doing this. Let's say hypothetically, you get the show, your name is Showstopper. You do two, three seasons, the show ends, they wait another two, three years. There's no one like you. Mm -mm. But then they reboot the show again. Then they use your name. Kind of pisses you off. Yeah, it does. You're like, are you kidding me? When I first found out there was an ice in the UK when they rebooted in 208, I was like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Come on. You can get a little bit more original than that because there's no one like me. And I was the same way on the Gladiators. It's like, that was my spot. This is who I am. Nobody's going to be able to repeat who I am and my personality on the show. So the way I'm going to control that is um, I have a really great team. I'm going to put in my contract. Mm -hmm. My lawyer is going to make sure right. they can never use my name again unless it's me. Right. It's funny enough. Brian hit me today and said, can we, can we use your name again? I said, no. No. Mm -mm. You're going to pay me for it? You can't use it. So no, they won't be able to do that. Yeah. Not <laughs> at all. Corey, did you watch our, um, our um, Muscles and Mayhem? No. Yeah, I did. I the did. documentary? I did. I did. The only I reason did. I asked you if you watched it is because MGM is the same company doing it. The greatest thing about what I did in this industry, because MGM, I made MGM a lot of money. Creed, one, two, three. There you go. The, the casting company said they, they, act, they requested you personally. You were the first name they requested. And they were looking for me for months. See, that's nice. So, you got a little pool. <laughs> You just got to know the right people. You got to know the right people. That's Hollywood. You just got to know the right Hollywood, people. That's Hollywood, man. It That's is. exactly what it comes It's not what you know, it's who you it. know. It's who you know. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting because the UK has, um, and one of the reasons why you guys are going to be filming in the UK is because they already, re they already rebooted. So they mm -hmm. have their sets already set up. They're going to save millions by actually doing it in the UK. And they were actually supposed to film this August. I like know. They're supposed right to now. August 9th, like now. Like now. Supposed to go to somewhere in the UK, July 13th through 19th, and yeah. then start right now for like, it's supposed to be the 4th through the 19th. And I was like, there's no way they're going to be ready. Mm -mm. I mean, you're an easy find. Do you know how hard it is to find females for this show? I mean, it's insane. Because these influencers that they might be in straight and strong, they look, they're just influenced on Instagram. Right. In real life, they can't bring the pain like that. Not at it's all. It's not easy. Not at all. It's too hard. And then they may not be able to have the charisma. They may not have this. It's so much that people, I know a lot of guys right now that look great, but they can't speak. They can't talk. They yeah. can't, they just could look good. And they want the whole package. You know, they want the whole package. They want the look. They want the athletic, you know, you got to be athletic. You got to be able to move. You got to have, you can speak. You got to, they want everything, you know, and that is a hard thing to find. It is. It really it is. is. And so there are people out there going, God, but look at me, I have the body. You know, I can move, but can you speak? Can you talk? Uh, not really. Can you make a crowd move? Can you make people be like? You gotta make a crowd feel something. They do, people gotta feel something. They gotta feel something. Mm -hmm. So how would Gladiators, I, I know you have a ton going on, trust me, but how would Gladiators change your life if you got it? It's another platform for me. Okay. Um, it's a bigger platform. It gives me um, president. Mm -hmm. um, it, gives me, it gives me the light I need because so when we look in the sky, there's stars, right? But there's always one star that's shining really, really high. And those other people that look at those other stars, you see those stars, but you see this one star. And when you see that one star, it makes everybody else see that star because now I'm up here in a place where people can't reach me at. And Gladiators goes along with, I'm going into the action acting lane. I do drama and stuff like that. But there's an, I'm going into the action acting lane. We don't have the Michael Jai Whites and Wesley Snipes and those no right. more. You have a me. Right. So it all ties together. Gladiators is what's going to take me to the next level. And then if it's movies first it's, and that comes, then that Gladiators see that is like, okay, we have a superstar that we could put here. Because mm -hmm. it's all about how can we get people to want to watch this and see this person? Who is this person? You right. just can't, you could get some nobodies. Oh, yeah. It's going to be harder to brand that show. Right. But you get a Mr. Kaye. They know who I am.
So that one star shining as bright as it is, which is you, mm -hmm. what are you going to do with that? What's the purpose of you shining that one star out of everyone? My total goal at the end of my career. That's what I want to know. Is to be the Secretary of Health and Safety for the United States. Okay. Fitness is the cover up for my brand. My brand is really to change lives. My, my brand is really to give back. My brand is really to inspire. Mm -hmm. When people come to me, they say, yes, you make a person look good, but they say, I'm inspired by you. That star is to give everybody and make everybody know that you can become this. Mm -hmm. You can be bigger than that. I, I aim to inspire. We have one goal every day we wake up to inspire someone. I want to continue to inspire a generation that's lost. Mm -hmm. That's lost in the sauce because everybody's blind. Absolutely. I need to be that beacon of hope that, you know what, if he did it from where he came from, look how hard he worked and what he's become, I can do that too. And if I could get 10, 20, if I could just get one, they can see that one and we can make this a ripple effect. And that's my whole goal in life is to continue to inspire because I come from very humble beginnings. I'm only I'm blessed to be here by the hard work and just being consistent and being that I need to be I need to be that thing that people can say because of you I made it here mm -hmm. and that's what I want to continue to be that's beautiful you are inspiring thank you you really are thank you thank you so much for showing up and doing my podcast today thank you for having I look me. forward to just watching you and seeing where you're going where can people find you um you can find me on Instagram Mr. Kaye you can find me on Facebook Corey Kaye actually Mr. Kaye everything and if you can't find that just google Corey Kaye it's hella stuff you can find me and you'll be able to connect with me <laughs> love it <laughs> thank you so much I so appreciate you showing up thank today you. Thank you. and appreciate you. I don't even need to say good luck because you're already there. You're making your way. You know, you're, you're a true trailblazer just making it happen. Thank and that's you. inspiring right there. Thank you. And that's what we love to see. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Chillin' with Ice today. And um, tune in for next week. We have some special guests coming on. And this is where legends live on. Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' with Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetrick. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' with Ice. <laughs>